Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, what is glorification? What is glory? Do you have any glory in your life? If somebody was to glorify you, what would they say? We have all kinds of glorification going on uh, in our world today. That guy earns so much money, he's wealthier than anybody else. Wow! That's what glorification is, isn't it? So the glorification of Jesus is what? Yeah. What's, what's so profound and awesome about the life of Jesus? Does it have something to do with revealing to us the nature of God and what life is all about? What it is that is the most powerful, effective, beneficial, life-giving thing in life? Does it come from Jesus? Does Jesus reveal that so well that we finally have to say, when we look at Jesus, we see God present. And if God is glorified, what's the glory of God? Is that the force that gives life? Is that what brings about all that is wonderful and good and beneficial in the world? Is that stuff huh, about God so revealing that we begin to understand what our life might be about? What is it that would that would be a part of our life that glorifies God? That glorifies us because we are like God? That's powerful kind of thinking, isn't it? That, that being somehow joined together with God is a powerful glorification, not only of God, but of our life. Now, that doesn't mean that all of us are going to do all the very same thing at the very same time. And so, you know, uh, no. We are individuals, but in our individuality, we have the possibility of glorifying God. Becoming like God in the world. That is so difficult so difficult because we so easily get lost in ourselves. When we take a look at the life of Jesus, we see not getting lost in ourselves, but getting lost in the we of life. And as we see in our uh, other lessons today, that we of life includes everyone. All of humanity. 
all of the creation of life, all of the environment. We're a part of that whole thing, so what do we do with it now? Do we make it better? Or do we destroy it, use it up, throw it away? So very easily, so very easily, we get caught up in how much can I get? And how can I do all that? What's going to fill me up? You know, whatever that is. Not really realizing that the soul focused on the here opens up the distinct possibility that we will destroy that which is out there. So Jesus gives us a, a, a new commandment. He says it's not new in one sense. All kinds of uh, emphasis throughout the scriptures that, uh, that, that, that talk about uh, loving your neighbor as yourself and you know, uh, caring for others. But what we see in Jesus is this new, how would you say it, emphasis, new realization that the we of life, being together with the environment, uh, the, all the other, other human beings, and somehow working in a way which is caring. We use the word love. It's a, it's kind of a distractive word in English because it, we, we, it's, it's uh, first thought of is this emotional, oh, I'm just, I have to be in your best or what you around and all that. Uh, no, the love that Jesus is talking about is a caring and a sharing with every last one. And if you want to get radical, it even talks about loving your enemy. Oh my. Is that what life is all about? Jesus says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do as they're putting him to death. What a powerful possibility that somehow you would help that other person become what every person should be, a caring person. How, how do we ever get there? Well, the only suggestion I have is Let's try and get into that relationship with this one of God, this Jesus. Maybe studying the scriptures is one of the ways that we could do that. Huh? Maybe sitting down and talking with that force of life that surrounds us. Prayer, we call it. A process in which we are reaching out to God in such a way that the spirit, the essence of God, which is all around, that it would come alive within us and redirect us. Prayer life is not so much controlling God as being there so God might reform us. And we can do it in all kinds of symbolic actions. Our, our Lord's Supper. No, this is bread and wine. But Jesus talked about somehow the bread and wine that 
he is giving to the disciples and we are participating in that as we participate in the Lord's Supper. That the essence of God would be a part within us, binding us together with God. So that the possibility might begin to happen that we are the essence of God alive now, individual, as in our own individual ways. Now, how, do, how, how do we get so involved in that that it actually happens? That's this new thing that Jesus is opening up for our possibility. Baptism, same way, to be washed by the presence of God, to, to, to get that self-centered, destructive, evil stuff out of our lives. We talk about repentance. It's not so much sadness. It's turning and going the other way. What's the other way we want to go? God's way. So the struggle becomes, how do we get acquainted with God's way so that somehow, somehow, we too might be the powerful presence of God in the world? Take a look at the scriptures. What you see is God's always coming alive through human beings. How about us? Why not us? Think about it in the terms of loving, caring for all others. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.